many cancer cells carrying as they do the genetic mutations that allow them to form the, the, the primary tumor are already genetically equipped to physically disseminate should they receive these signals. However, there are many primary cancer cells, I believe, I don't know, I believe, which although they've succeeded in forming a primary tumor, are not susceptible to these inductive signals and therefore will not activate their EMT program. So I, I, don't, I don't apply this to all cancer cells. Some are receptive to and responsive to these signals, others are not. But the activation of the program per se, again I emphasize, does not in my eyes, for what it's worth, require additional mutations beyond those that were selected during primary tumor formation. Well, I think the dynamic is that the cancer, as it grows, creates a stroma, which is increasingly reactive and desmoplastic and inflammatory. Uh, there's a guy named Dvorak at Beth Israel who once said that uh, tumors are wounds that do not heal. And so the stroma of an advanced tumor has lots of inflammatory cells, uh, which are, is quite different from the stroma of a normal tissue. And this reactive or inflammatory stroma is likely to be the source of these EMT-inducing signals, not just a regular old stroma. This, by the way, has important implications for what happens during metastasis because when a cancer cell that has activated the EMT in a primary tumor lands in a, different, in a distant tissue, it will land in a normal tissue, which at that point in time has a perfectly normal stroma and therefore is no longer, re is not releasing the signals, the heterotypic signals that would induce an EMT. And what is likely to happen then is that many cancer cells in this normal microenvironment will then revert via a mesenchymal epithelial transition, the reverse, back to the phenotype of their ancestors in the primary tumor that had never undergone an EMT in the first place. You, you follow? It's, it's reversible. Yeah, it's reversible. Exactly. In at least some cells, it's reversible. It may be irreversible in others. Correct. Um, for example, it, uh, in certain human cancers, there are mutations that irreversibly lock uh, a cancer cell into the mesenchymal state, notably mutations in the E cadherin gene, for example. Well, CTCs are circulating tumor cells, cells that have left the, the primary tumor and then end up at some distant site in the body and people are very interested in them. I don't know what's going to, be, going to become of them. How long do cells stay in the circulation? Well, the average circulating tumor cell is like 30 microns in diameter. What's the luminal diameter of an average microvessel, like a capillary? It's about 8 microns. So a cell is released into the circulation its first pass through the heart sends it into the lungs, which is full of eight micron capillaries. And so the great majority of the CTCs get filtered out within almost seconds of going into the circulation. They don't have li long lifetimes in the circulation because of this trapping. Um, so what does that mean? Some people say, well, maybe this, ha this or that happens to them while they're in the circulation. But again, I return to what I just said. Uh, many of the processes that people speculate about the fate of CTCs that are in the circulation take place over the course of hours and days. But the CTCs only exist in free cells in the circulation for very ephemeral periods of time. Um, interestingly, uh, to the extent one has started to look at the CTCs in, I think, prostate cancer patients, um, and, and by the way, their presence is indicative of metastatic disease, uh, often one finds that the CTCs have both co-expressed epithelial mesenchymal markers, as if uh, they have gone through a partial EMT prior to have, having uh, left the uh, primary tumor. People will say, well, how do you know that they weren't fully uh, epithelial and they underwent a partial EMT uh, while they were in the bloodstream, let's say, or something like that? And that doesn't make any sense to me because they're only in the circulation for such a brief period of time that changes, profound changes in gene expression and changes in protein levels are just totally unrealistic given the kinetics with which a, 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 a cell changes its phenotype and its gene expression program, which goes over many hours, not minutes.